राधा माधवा कुंज बिहारी गोपीतना वल्लभा गिरिवर धारी अचलानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यमरातीरावन तारी ज्ञानांजन शलाकया चक्षुवन्मीलितं तस्म श्री गुरव नम श्री चैतन्य मनोवेष्ट स्थापित भूतले स्वयं रूप मह्यम ददा स्वदाक वंदेहम श्री गुरो श्रीयुतापदकमल श्रीगुरून वैष्णवांश
ಶ್ರೀರೂಪಂ ಸಾಗ್ರಜಾತ ಸಹಗಣ ರಘುನಾಥಾನ್ವಿತ ತಂ ಸಜೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವಧೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸಹಗಣ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿತ ನಮಾ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪೃಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಭಕ್ತಿವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಷ್ಟೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷಾ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶತಾರಿಣೆ ನಮೋ ಮಹಾವದನ್ಯಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಪ್ರದಾಯತೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ನಾಮೆ ಗೌರತ್ವಶೇ ನಮಃ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧೋ ದೀನ ಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾ ಕಾಂತ ನಮಸ್ತುತೆ ಅತ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗಿ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾತ್ಮಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ವಾಂಚಾಕಲ್ಪತರು ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಗೌರವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಗೋಲ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸಿ ದಿಸ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಪ್ರೊಜೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಬಿಹೈಂಡ್ ಪ್ರೊಜೆಕ್ಟರ್
refer this in the middle of my lecture now. Huh? You can just keep in mind. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Yattu Kame Psuna Karma. Sahankare Navapunaha. Priyate Bahulayasam. Tat Rajasam Udahritam. Three devotees can recite, please. Yattu Kame Psuna Karma. Sahankare Navapunaha. Priyate Bahulayasam. Tat Rajasam Udahritam. Tat Rajasam Udahritam. Yattagame Sunakarma Sahankare Navakunaha Yate Bahulayasam Tat Rajasam Udakritam Yattagame Sunakarma Yattagame Sunakarma Sahankare Navakunaha Yat. Yat. That which. That which. Tu. Tu. But. but. Kama Ipsuna. Kama Ipsuna. By one with desires for fruitive results. Karma. Karma. Work. Work. Sa ahankarena. Sa with ego. ego. Va. 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 Or. Punaha. Punaha. Again. Again. Kriyate. Kriyate. Is performed. Is performed. Bahula, ayasam. Bahula ayasam. With great labor. With great labor. Tat. That. Rajasam, in the mode of passion. Udahiratam, you said to be. Please read the translation, one of you. Mike, Mike. But action performed with great effort by one seeking to gratify his desires and enacted from a sense of false ego is called action in the mode of passion. So there are three very important words used in this verse. Hmm. Action performed with great effort means bahulayasam. Ayas or prayas. Huh? Bahulayas means great endeavor, great labor. And also uh, one seeking to gratify his desires. Kama ipsuna. Huh? Kama ipsuna means he, uh, he has got some very strong desires in the heart, attachments, which want, somehow you want to get it. Kama eh? Ipsuna. And uh, enacted from a sense of false ego. Sa Ahankarena. He is doing it out of false ego. Mm. Uh, these three characteristics are characteristics of work performed in mode of passion. So please repeat these three words. Bahulayasam. Kama uh, Ipsuna and third one Sa Ahankarena Sa Ahankarena So these three words let us try to understand these three words So Kama Ipsuna by one with desires for fruitive results any work in this world you do, naturally, you don't do the work without a goal. Nothing wrong in having a goal. But if one is mad after that goal, mad after achieving what I want, or I have made up my mind that I want only this, and I cannot settle with anything else, then that kind of madness or uh, madness can actually create a very dangerous future for that person. Like uh, somebody wanted to get into one particular IIT only because he knows that the department is very famous. But if he got in some other smaller IIT or not so famous IIT or he didn't get in IIT, he got in Iser, or 
he couldn't get into IIT, got to NIT. Then uh, he feels as if he is a big failure, which is not. Huh? There are boys who can't even get into engineering college. Huh? You know, they are joining some college, Shanmohananda, some college. Huh? Isn't it? There are people who can't even get into that college also. Huh? They go for BA, become also so many people. So, but this person thinks because I couldn't get into IIT, I commit suicide. Huh? Because that is his own concocted idea that success means I have to get into this particular thing. Only then I am successful. So sometimes I find a boys who, even those who get second and third rank are most dissatisfied fellows. They are most frustrated fellows. As if the world is fully gloomy for them. Because how I am not able to bring that first rank fellow there down? And I can't be like him. So the and these kind of people, because of the frustration, they are punishing themselves you know, by their own mind. Their mind punishes them. How, how the mind can punish you? Like, uh, you know, when they are alone in the room, they are burning in their heart. Mm-hmm. They are constantly thinking of envious thoughts about the person who is, you know, ahead of them. You know? And they are wondering how I can mar his name or how I can bring his reputation down. Or how I can be like him. So, these are problems with uh, desire for fruitive results. And these people also have a notion that everything is in my control. By my effort, uh, uh, I will achieve and I will show to the world who I am. This is this kind of this kind of idea they have. That's that's what leads to sa ahankarena. He says with ego. Yeah. And in order to show that, then Bahula Ayasam, he says, they make very great labor. So these things are very thoroughly explained in the scriptures with no ambiguity, with utmost clarity. Uh, our scriptures say that uh, the living entity in this material world is in a very uh, precarious position, is trapped in a material body, like a bird put in a cage. And having been put in this material body, the, we, have, we are very limited uh, in our freedom. Huh? You don't have any, you, it's not that you can do whatever you want. Huh? We are very limited. Just like, for example, can you go to the 10-story building and jump and nothing will happen to you? Huh? No, our body is very fragile. Huh? Uh, body will collapse huh? or will break your legs. In the, in the same manner, just as there are physical limits for your body, huh? If the temperature goes beyond 25, you feel restless. 20 degrees centigrade, you want an air-conditioned room or a fan or something like that. Temperature goes below 5, 5 degrees centigrade, again you are uncomfortable. You want something to wrap up your body. So these are limitations of the body. And the body cannot uh, take heat or too much heat or too much cold. Yeah. Similarly, this body is a very fragile body. Huh? It can uh, be easily uh, damaged by uh, motor automobile accident. This body can be damaged by diseases. Huh? This, uh, uh, this body is constantly changing and in a declining mode. Huh? It becomes old eventually, 60, 70, 80, and then it withers away. So uh, these are all bodily limitations uh, when you are seated in this, this body. Similarly, our mind also has many problems. Like there are some people have culture shock, they say, correct? No? What is culture shock? You are used to coming in one type of culture. When you come into another culture, you get a shock because, like imagine you come from a family where you are pampered a lot. When you come to a place where you are not being pampered, you are disciplined, then you find it difficult. You don't like it. That's a culture shock for you. Yes, everybody was praising you, pampering you. Now people are finding fault with you, uh, ordering you or disciplining you. You don't like it. Yeah. In the same manner, yeah, somebody lived very affluently, but sometimes billionaire families also become beggar families. Correct or not? In this world. So you will find that one can have mental turmoils. We are living in an age where the jobs are uncertain, where the uh, academic results are uncertain. The future prospects are unclear. Uh, there is no, like somebody, you know, is getting, you know, 80 lakhs per year. Another boy is not able to get even 10,000 per month. 
there are people uh, given after finishing again. those days graduate means you can get something nowadays simply because you are a ba ma graduate you don't get anything i recently came to know they said when you join schools as teachers or college as professors although the salary this seems to be decent but they don't give you the salary they say that will give you later you know that they delay 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 or they give you in hand they give you 15 20000 and they say that other 40000 you won't get now in future you may get although but you have to sign in the paper that you are going to receive 60000 huh? so <clears throat> the life is very pretty challenging in the modern times huh? so therefore there is always a fear that you know the world is going in this type of direction huh? and unless you have a very strong spiritual inner stability <laughs> these three problems are disease of the mind correct na kame psuna sahankarena bahulayasa these three viruses in the mind will not keep you peaceful huh? if one wants to be peaceful one should be able to rise above it hmm? so let us deal with one by one huh? the kama epsana one with uh, disease for fruitive results so what is the meaning of fruitive result this much input i am giving that much output i should get that is fruitive huh? for example you will see four boys are giving the same amount of input but the results they get are different how many of you have observed it correct na <laughs> is it huh? the preparatory leaves are same for the four boys huh? everybody got 20 20 days leave and they are using the same books huh? and they are giving the same examination question paper also is not different <laughs> the same question paper huh? but when they write their performance is different one boy told me prabhuji why 20 days even if you give me 20 months also my performance will be same he said because because some boys uh, they have their own capacity limited capacity uh, to study to hold the information to reproduce the information to be able to process the information to analyze to evaluate to compare to contrast be able to think out of box uh, it's not the same in everybody everybody has different type of iq uh, yeah so it's not that if input is x then output should be y we cannot say like that uh, the money is spent by the boys is same the books are the same you know the college is same efforts may be same but output is different so here is where our karma comes into uh, factor account <laughs> like for example you are good karma you know you have good karma you have a handsome body you are you have good education you have good food good health born in a good family if you have bad karma then you, you have ugly face and you're born in a slum you don't get good food you are sickly and you know and uh, you have legal implications huh? and uh, many times you face challenges in life and failures so that means one should immediately think that something bad in the past i have done due to which i am facing these inevitabilities despite my not wanting them correct right? Naturally, if you ask any boy which one you want, the first one or the second one, everybody will say first one. <laughs> I want a handsome body. Everybody wants to be the most beautiful. Everybody wants to be most intelligent and born in a good family, making good money, good health, uh, everything rosy and cozy, like a life bed of roses. Uh. It happens to some people. You will see uh, because they have a lot of uh, stock up on you in the past. Correct? No. But even those people suffer some part of their life. It's not that they are always all right. So <clears throat> when we Uh, develop a fruity mentality uh, we think that i am endeavoring and i should get this type of results huh? if i if i don't get then then i get angry i get wild huh? why it didn't happen like this huh? but actually the uh, bhagavad gita says that your role is only half huh? your role is not everything not even half your role is only 20% i'll show you that verse huh? there is another verse i'll show you other 80% is not in your hands yeah you can tell this word adishthanam tatha karta karanam cha prithak vidam vividash cha prithak chesta daivam cha ivatra panchamam there are five factors you will find adishthanam means a place karta means a worker karanam means instruments tak vidham tak vidham 
vividaha sir karanam prithak vidam means different type of instrument senses and vivida uh, prithak uh, sir prithak chesta means endeavors and daivam means a supreme so let us give an example we will make it easy shadishthanam is like a car say you have a car and karta you are the driver of the car okay you are working in the car by driving and uh, karanam like you have the steering you have the brake you have the uh, clutch correct now that is like karanam yeah and you know chesta uh, prithak chesta means the exertion that you do for example you turn the steering or you apply the brake or you apply the pressure on the clutch or what do you call it accelerator accelerator is it yeah accelerator see if you press the accelerator you go fast you press the brake you stop correct now and if you use the steering you turn that means it decides the direction of the car correct now so these are chestas endeavors correct now? and uh, daivam that is the super soul huh? super soul's role that is beyond uh, fate huh? the panchama these are five so what here he is saying let us assume one of you have a, a maruti car another one has a benz car correct no so the cars are different the maker of the car is different so different makeup of the cars have different speed prescribed correct or not correct no uh, so that is going to dif- make the speed different that's one of the factors similarly every one of you boys sitting here you have a particular type of iq in the, in the particular type of body correct or not isn't it so that uh, like that the car model is different similarly our bodies are made differently somebody has some abilities somebody doesn't have that ability correct now uh, and then another thing he says is uh, apart from that then the karanam then the instruments uh, that you use sometimes the steering is not working properly huh? sometimes the brake sometimes the clutch see if a brake is not working properly can you go fast you can't very dangerous isn't it uh, sometimes after applying the brake it, goes, it takes 40 feet and stops <laughs> that means you can't go very fast in the car huh? so your karanam instruments also matter what type of instruments you have hmm? isn't it <laughs> similarly prithak chesta the endeavors that you make hmm? and of course you can make your endeavor uh, everybody has different ability to make different amounts of endeavor also for example uh, if i tell all of you to stand and jump and touch the ceiling huh? i'm just giving an example is all the navendra maharaj used to say all of you jump hari bol they say jump up. Uh, little bit they will jump you say no you have to touch the ceiling you will say <laughs> some tall fellows can touch also sometimes huh? very tall fellows but if i am short i cannot reach that much so everybody's chesta will be different huh? and then the daivam means a super soul the super soul has planned uh, what should be given to whom that is in his hands also correct no he knows what is good for us correct or not so these are five factors he is saying see here the place of action the body the performer the soul uh, the various senses the many kinds of endeavor and ultimately super soul these are the five factors of action see this body is already designed and given you you can't change the model of the body at least for this lifetime next lifetime you can get replacement one more you'll get huh? but now the model of the car is given to you huh? for example did you decide the pigment of color of your skin it's a new trend it was given to you you can slightly change it by putting some fire and lovely or something huh? <laughs> little bit you can change it but you can't change it too much correct no little bit material you can change similarly the face cut you have is also given to you people try to change the hair styles to make more look nice disco style and so many different styles correct no go to beauty parlor they will do so many things with your hair or even plastic surgery they do in order to make you look more nice but do you think it makes a very big change not a very big change of course some change they make but not so much change uh, so the face cut and pigment skin color and all these things cannot be changed so therefore the body is already given to you and the body like capacity is also different 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 bodies huh? as i told you luna has very low speed 
Maruti has car has little better. Benz has even more better. Then there are foreign cars like Lamborghini and all that. There are vehicles which can uh, go very fast. Like amongst animals also cheetah. Cheetah is a very fast runner, correct, no? Can jump like anything, extremely fast. No? Horse, very fast. But there are other slow animals also, like that. And uh, the performer is a jiva, that is you. Huh? So you also have a contribution. Yours is only one-fifth of the contribution. Huh? Similarly, your senses, for example, eagle can have telescopic eyes to see 50 miles distance. Huh? It can see from the sky a dead body on the ground. Do you know that? It has telescopic eyes. What is the power of our eyes? It's very limited. Hmm? In the same manner, dog can sniff and find out a thief. Can any of you sniff? You can sniff, but you can't find a thief. Huh? Like that you can do, that's all. Isn't it? But dog has that ability. Huh? Yeah, kangaroo can jump, you know, big distance. Yeah. In the same manner, different creatures are given different abilities. Like human being can produce only one baby in a year at the most. But mosquitoes can produce hundreds and thousands. Huh? Their reproduction ability is so great. So they can just uh, unite once and lay so many eggs. Million mosquitoes can come out of it. Correct, no? So that means the abilities of the different... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, bodies are different. Therefore, different bodies have different type of senses. Huh? Our eyes are not so powerful like the eyes of an eagle. Hmm. Yeah. Our ears have a range of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Huh? You can't hear. Whereas if you see a, a rat or a other creatures, you know, they can they have ultrasonic sounds they can hear. We cannot hear that. Hmm. Yeah. We have difficulty. So, in this way, we have to admit the fact that my senses have limitation. Huh? And my body has limitation. And the effort I can make is also different from person to person. Huh? There, are, there are fellows, if they take a book, they will not keep it down for three, four hours. Huh? With full concentration they study. You've seen people like that. And there are fellows, within ten minutes, they get distracted. Huh? They have to do something else after ten minutes. They become restless, correct now? So, that's why he's saying the different kinds of endeavor made and ultimately there is Lord also watching. Karmana adai bane trena jantur deho papati. There is super soul watching. Upadrashta, Anumanta, Bharta, Bhokta, Maheshwara, he says. Upadrashta means supervisor, group supervisor. He is the director. Uh, Anumanta means the permitter. See, if there is something in your account good, you know, then Supersoul sees that this fellow has something in his account, it has to be given. He will award you. Anumanta. Anumanta means he is a permitter. Sanctioner. If there is something bad, that also he will sanction. Whatever is to be sanctioned, he will sanction. So that is the reason why in India you will see, uh, since time immemorial, people know that if something is not happening, people will not lament much. Especially, I am not telling this generation. This generation is foolish. You know, the previous generation I am telling. Yeah. The previous generation, they will what they will say, Jab hona hai tab, ho, ho hi jayega. Koi chinta nahi. Yeah. Agar humko mil nahi raha hai, to matlab hai, amare tak deer mein nahi hai. So, I have endeavored. See, not that they are lazy. You should make an effort. After making effort, if you are not getting something, what is the meaning? That means I don't deserve it. You now they were like, like, like for example, one, one boy went to a hilltop, out of extreme frustration, he jumped off to commit suicide. But then he, when he came down, there was a river flowing there. He fell in the river. And uh, at that time, there was one Rajakumari with her associates, with her sakis, you know, playing and uh, enjoying in the waters. Huh? But suddenly a big crocodile came. And it opened the mouth. And this uh, Rajakumari became frightened. And all the other sakis, they swam back to the bank of the river except her. But when this fellow fell, he fell right next to a crocodile. Crocodile got so frightened, crocodile went underwater. Hmm. Thinking what has come from the top. Eh? And immediately all the Sakis told the king that a great hero came from the sky. Huh? And he saved the Rajkumari. Huh? King said, I only had one daughter in my life. I had no son. So now you marry my daughter and become the king, he said. So the boy was thinking, amazing. Huh? I was thinking of committing suicide. Now I got a wife also. Now I got a kingdom also. Now. Because it was written in his fate. That was the time he was supposed to get. 
Exactly. See, there are pockets of, you know, good fortune delivered to you at different times of your life. Something will be delivered at the age of 20, at 23, 26. There are pockets of good fortune awaiting you, which is already written for you. You don't have to do much effort. Little effort you do, it will come. You will see. How many of you have seen boys putting little effort and getting it? Things? You have seen that? Little effort. Like a sparrow has to get up in the morning, fly one kilometer, he gets all the fruits there. And eat some fruits and bring some fruits for the home. Hmm? Little effort you get. So, therefore, it was written in his faith. So, he got it. Huh? it was, he got that subsequently. On the other hand, if somebody is supposed to suffer, see recently, you know, this Bhubaneshwar big train accident. You know, first they told 300 people. Now we came to know 500 people. Huh? Died. Uh, three trains. Two trains hitting one another and falling on a third train. Huh? 500 people. These people would not even have even known huh? that train can cause such terrible accident. Huh? People sometimes don't go in plane thinking that plane crash happens, there's no way to escape. <laughs> train people think if some accident can jump out or something, people think like that. But even in a train, such terrible accident can happen. Correct or not? Isn't it? So, this material world is padam padam, yathvi padam, nateshaam, he says. Any, at any point of time, if, if it is there and uh, somebody is fed that he has to die in a, a vahanam accident, huh? it's written in some of the <clears throat> people's fate that one, while going in a vehicle, one will have some accident in the vehicle <clears throat> and that particular age. That, that also is very, very amazingly arranged, you know, on that particular day. Many living entities are brought together and they have their fate. Huh? So those living beings are only put there. Like when Rajiv Gandhi was in Suchindrama somewhere, you know, one lady came to garland him, you know that. She was a live bomb, isn't it? At that time, one personal secretary of Rajiv Gandhi, you know, he suddenly got some this thing. Huh? He said, I will come. So he had to go. Huh? So he went to bathroom. And another man wanted to tell something to Rajiv Gandhi. So he came, you know, whispering something. He wanted to come and tell. He came. At that time, when the live bomb put the garland, <laughs> that it exploded, correct, no? The whole body of Rajiv Gandhi exploded. So that person next to Rajiv Gandhi, the personal secretary, whatever, he had gone away, so nothing happened to him. And the other fellow who was far away came near, he got exploded along with him. Correct, no? So that means why the fate is so rigid, that if it has to happen, nobody can. Yeah, stop it. And a person who is not supposed to die is next to Rajiv Gandhi. So he's taken away. Correct, no? Suddenly he gets the pressure. He has to go. <laughs> he's taken out. Because that is not written in his faith that he has to die. He is gone. And then somebody else who is supposed to die is far away. You come here. You are brought here nearby. Similarly, the train is going. So people are put together in a train where everybody's fate is matching. It's called a mass karma, we call it. So, everybody is finished like that. It, it's a painful, painful thing. We certainly pray for the people who passed away. Huh? We pray that, uh, you know, they get uh, you know, suitable human bodies and practice devotion service and go back to Godhead. Huh? But at the same time, we should know that, like uh, plus and minus, I told you two examples. I told you the suiciding fellow <laughs> becoming Rajkumar. And these people having many hopes, they're going in a train and they're finished. You will see that. So, there is a parameter of such actions. Huh? Upadrashta means director. Anumanta means parameter. Bharta means maintainer. Bhokta means supreme enjoyer. Maheshwaraha, supreme controller. What is his name? Paramatmeti Chakpyukto Dehesmin Purushaparaha. His name is Paramatma. He is the ultimate person. He gives you these things also, like he is giving you the body. He is giving you the senses, you know. <clears throat> he is a super soul. And he is giving you the ability to endeavor also in this body. Huh? Everything is provided by him. So you are the only one person who is performer. That means you are the actor in this body, performer. Otherwise, you know, your body is rigidly fixed. Your senses are fixed already. In the body, the senses are also fixed. Ability of the senses, ability of the body. Huh? And also your cheshta, you have some amount of ability to do cheshta. That is also fixed. And the super soul is fixed. What is one thing is in your hands is you are the performer. That's all. One-fifth of the account only you have. 
So, therefore, Kama Ipsana. Now, applying the same example, like I was telling you the car example now. Uh, one with results, fruitive results. Now, students who are studying or uh, boys who are working in jobs. Like one boy was telling me that he was doing tuitions. His friend was telling, hey, tuition people are making one lakh per month. Two lakh per month. But this boy is making only 25,000. But he's an intelligent boy. He said that, Prabhu, I, I don't deserve more than this because I am not so good in maths, he said. But still, they allowed me to be tuition teacher. <laughs> because in tuition, the children have to choose you. Correct, no? Children say that he's a good teacher, you'll get good salary. If that means customer satisfaction is very important. Correct, no? Only then his salary is hiked up. Otherwise, not. Hmm? So that means, do, do you think all tuition teachers get the same amount? No. no. It varies from person to person. That is why, because the type of body you have, the type of intelligence, IQ you have, the type of senses you have, the type of effort you make. See, when you make some effort, that, that's going to come. Effort part, I'm not talking now. I'll come to that very soon. Hmm. But right now, here what I'm saying is, Kama Ipsuna means, Kama means desire. Ipsuna means hankering. Hmm. Uh, hankering for certain desires. Huh? Like a person, he cannot cogently speak English. Huh? One sentence also he cannot frame. But he has a desire to be a TED talker. Is it good? <laughs> there are people like that. Uh, but uh, he has, like the, I saw one fellow, you know, when I wanted, uh, in one kirtan, I wanted to one fellow to play Mirdanga. So he brought the Mirdanga, he moves hand very vigorously. But the sound is not coming. Huh? Properly. Because he has not practiced. But he has seen people who play Mridangam very powerfully and he has developed a kind of dream that I want to be a great Mridangam player. But his Mridangam playing is very rudimentary, very basic. Then I told, hey, get a good fellow who can play nicely. He said, no, no, Prabhuji, I have a desire to play. You have a desire to play, but you don't have the training to play. Correct, no? Then they got another fellow. I told this boy, your movements are very nice. <laughs> Your, your style of moving the hand is very good. Only thing is no sound is coming. <laughs> yes. So, one shouldn't, uh, one shouldn't aspire for something which one is not good at. Correct, no? Like, uh, there are certain things limited which we have to accept as facts of life. See, if a donkey wants to be a singer like Cuckoo, is it possible? Huh? Donkey has donkey's voice. Huh? Donkey can aspire for something else. But he shouldn't aspire for something which is not a cup of his tea. Correct, no? Hmm. Now, cuckoo can sing very sweetly. It is born with that. Correct? No? Yeah. This is not to discourage us. Huh? This is to speak, uh, understand the reality. Why we have to know the reality? People who are not ready to come to grip with the reality, they are the people who commit suicide. Huh? Imagine if a donkey says, because I can't sing like this cuckoo, then I will commit suicide. How foolish it is. See, there is a story in Mahabharata about this fellow, this Bhima. See, Bhima had a great desire to sing. Huh? And everybody knew that his voice is not good. Huh? But nobody told him. Because if you tell, he'll get angry, you know? Yeah. So he went to market and he purchased the harmonium. Huh? And he brought the harmonium. And he was sitting in the palace and playing the harmonium and loudly singing. It was a big disturbance to many. Huh? So many, many people went and reported to Yudhishthira Maharaj. Huh? And the first people told Arjuna, Arjuna said, my lord, I cannot tell him. Huh? Okay. He'll get angry on me. I am a, I'm a younger brother. How can I tell? And it is a, it's not proper etiquette also to correct the elder brother. No? You better go and report to Yudhishthira, they said. So when the matter came to Yudhishthira, Yudhishthira is also a very sensitive personality. He is not a person who can just immediately correct somebody. Hmm? He was wondering what to do. After a deep thought, many, many people repeatedly complained about it. And then finally he called Draupadi and said, Draupadi, you are the right person. Huh? You know, you can correct this fellow. Draupadi said, I'll think what to do. Then she went to Bhima and said, See, Bhima, if you want to practice singing you know, with harmony and bell, you should always sit in a Ekanta Sthana and play. This is not the place. In palace, there is so much noise, some people going, coming. You have to do sadhana. You go to the forest, sit in a serene setting, and you practice in some mountain or something like that. And Vimata said, thank there, huh? that's a good idea. I'll become a very great expert and come back. Huh? So he took the harmonium and went to forest. Somewhere in a mountainous area, in the forest area, he was sitting and he was, he was singing loudly. Huh? And uh, 
Mm. You know, nobody was there in that area. It was a serene area. But one fellow came running here, very close to Bhima. And then he went away. And then Bhima called him and said, Hey, why did you come running towards me and why did you go away? And the man said, See, I'm a I'm little shy to tell you. He said, No, no, please come on, tell me, what's the matter? If I tell you, you have to promise me that you will not beat me up. <laughs> I won't beat you, tell me. He said, See, I'm a dobi, I was searching for my donkey. <laughs> I heard the sound, you know. So I thought maybe my donkey has gone this side. Now I understood it is not donkey, it is someone else. Then he went. So Bhima felt very bad. He took the harmonium, broke the harmonium to pieces, to shreds. And there was a river nearby. He went and took a bath and sat in the front of the river. And he started weeping loudly. So, of course, instead of just weeping, he was singing a song of Krishna. Song about Krishna, remembering Krishna, he was singing. So, immediately Krishna appeared there. And Krishna said, and he asked Bhima uh, to Krishna that, you know, hey, what made you appear here? Krishna said, anybody who remembers me, I appear in front of him immediately. And then Krishna said, I don't care about what type of tone you have. I only care about your feelings. You have such feelings for me, feelings of devotion. Therefore, I came, he said. So, you don't have to prove to me you are a great singer. There are so many singers who can't attract me. But I'm attracted by the... Bhakti Bhava. Huh? Okay. Then Bhima became very satisfied. Then he came back to palace. And he told Draupadi, Draupadi, now I know why you sent me to forest. <laughs> but of course he couldn't become angry on Draupadi. <laughs> yeah. So, but the idea is what? Uh, he was trying for something which is going to only frustrate him. Correct, no? He was trying something in a wrong direction. That's why it says, Kama Ipsin, I mean, don't hanker for something that is not meant for you. Don't hanker for that. That will frustrate you in life. And that is the reason I told you, even second rankers, third rankers are frustrated because they want first rank. Now, one should know that, that therefore, and the other three factors we will see and then finally I'll conclude. Second one, he says, ahankarena, with ego. Ahankarena means what? You know, a person did something and something came out well, and he became a little famous. Now, for example, you were here, you showed here, and then you showed here. So, once you show higher and higher performance, your parents' expectation from you also increases. You agree? Yeah. And the friend circle, their expectation also about you increases. And now from here, if you came to this also, you know, many are going to ridicule you or talk ill of you. You may say, I was here before, why didn't you see that? They won't see that. They will only see that you did this, you did this, you have shown up to this, now you have come. So this is one very big challenge in this world where we are living. People actually, uh, people can, your friends can be sometimes the most dangerous fellows in your life. Huh? Like one boy got 25 lakh per annum huh? job. So he had a fiancé. So he sent a WhatsApp message to fiancé that I got a 25 lakh job per annum. She said, what is so great about it? You don't know our classmate, he got 32 lakhs. Like that she sent back. On the same day this fellow committed suicide. He said, because she sent in a WhatsApp group where there were 100 others. Were there. So everybody else has seen. He, first of all, he was very pained that a girl is ridiculing him. He's not a boy. A girl ridicules, you feel even more pain. And secondly, she was also ridiculing him in the public, in a public WhatsApp group. So he got even more hurt. And uh, thirdly, the boy who got 32 lakhs was his, was his rival, <laughs> rival boy in the class. So when she quoted his name, he got even more. So now he couldn't control the pressure in his head. He committed suicide. Huh? Although he got a job for 25 lakh per annum. Just think about it. Huh? So, this, this is the problem. He's saying, Ahankar, you know, because he was situated on the platform of Ahankar. Now, what is Ahankar? False ego. See, there are true, two types of egos. One is true ego, that is false ego. The, what is true ego? True ego means, Jeevara Sarupahoy. God is great, I am small. I am servant of God. 
that is correct identity huh? that is called true ego and what is false ego the covering over the soul huh? for example i am fair or i am black or i am handsome or i am ugly i am intelligent boy you know i have a high iq you have a low iq huh? i got placed in microsoft huh? you couldn't get placed yet so these are all and this kind of thinking based on body and mind that is called false ego huh? i didn't think it superficial things like one boy was in my nariman point in bombay huh? when he was standing in the bus stop he told one man hey man do you know where am i working man i swear look at the tallest building in nariman point it was a big tower huh? like a, we say no uh, skyscraper huh? big skyscraper building so that's my office huh? so of course the office is very tall his ahankar is also very tall huh? He said, "That stuff is I work in." So he was very proud. The next day, he was laid off from the job. <laughs> where is where? Uh, you may be working in the tallest building, but that is not a permanent identity. Huh? Next day, he was laid off. For, no more job there for him. So the false ego is foolish. Why? Because the false ego keeps on changing. Huh? It's not a permanent thing. Huh? Like uh, sometimes in one lifetime you are a king, another lifetime you are ordinary praja. one lifetime you are a devata uh, in the you are angel another lifetime one is a dog or a cat huh? one is born in a lower form so the bodies are changing so why should we have a ego based on the superficial changing body huh? or like you know now this lifetime i got iit degree next lifetime i will be only iti huh? possible or not <laughs> is it and i will be a fitter or a turner huh? you know a welder welder or something like that so why should i be proud of my iit degree huh? it is given and taken away yeah. false ego means what it is it covers you and then it goes away then another false ego comes yeah. false ego is ever changing thing yeah. so we should not be proud uh, about things which are you know superficial which don't last for us ahankarena another reason why we should not be proud is bhagavatam says that do not be proud of the borrowed plumes he says what is the meaning of that sometimes girls you must have seen in schools they do a peacock dance they take lot of feathers of the peacock and they put it you know behind them like this and they dance like you seen that peacock dance huh? so they they dress themselves like a peacock but they are not peacock this is called borrowed plumes <laughs> they are borrowed from the peacock for dancing purpose that's all afterward they won't have it <laughs> similarly all of us whatever we carry good qualities those are all borrowed from krishna which verse says that yad yad vibhuti matsattvam you know that was shrimat urjitam eva va tat tat eva vagachatvam mama tejom shasambhavam is it hmm? so i had shown this in this uh, what krishna says you see what he says balam balavatam sam i am the strength of strong can this will be strong like this on his own so krishna is giving him the strength he says so really krishna says buddhir so ancient has brain surely but he didn't create his brain krishna has given him given him the brain isn't it i am the intelligence of the intelligent newton found out the law of gravitation because krishna gave him the brain that for purpose that give god the nobel prize for purpose that <laughs> god gave the brain <laughs> give him the nobel prize he says in this way he says everything uh, i am the taste of water i am the light of the sun and the yeah i am causing the rains and i am causing the you know different type of fruit juices by the moonshine uh, pravasmi shashi surya yo so he is doing all these things in the creation he is a person behind the creation maya adhyakshena prakriti so in this way he is the essence of everything he is the very best of everything so when we understand these things uh, there is no ahankar for a devotee ah, ahankar false ego is dissolved for a devotee a devotee knows krishna is the master i am his servant whatever i possess he has given me see the 120 elements in mandley's periodic table 
which man has observed in this world, for which each of the element you can write a structure, correct? No, one has to two p six. You can write a structure. The very precise characteristics are found there, correct or not? Hmm? Are like iron, sulfur, manganese for everything. So the salts and bases can be uh, tested in the laboratory. Hmm? Even though sometimes two salts look similar, but when you test it using some experiment, you can find out the very specific lakshana. Correct? No, that's the way he has created in this world. Huh? So it's one twenty elements with which all the industries are running now. Who has created those elements? Krishna says, "I am the source of all of them." Bhumi rapo analava yu tamana budhirevacha. So therefore, the elements are created by him. And my senses, like eyes, ears, nose, tongue, skin, hands, legs, that is created by him. My brain is supplied by him. So if all the three things I told you now belongs to him, uh, plus there are uh, eatables like the you know fruits and berries and grains and cereals and spices, that is also created by him. And even the things which I desperately need, like uh, you know air to breathe, you know water to drink, the you know the Uh, rain water correct no the water the wind the sunlight the moonlight heat all these things are supplied by him so any devotee with a little common sense can immediately ascertain that all these things are supplied by krishna and i am only on the receiving end i am receiving them and using them why should i have a hankar huh? he is the boss he is a good boss nice boss he is supplying me so many things i have to be grateful to him and uh, uh, therefore A devotee doesn't think I am very important. He thinks who is very important? Krishna is very important. So the whole world revolves around me or around Krishna, Krishna, because Krishna is the pivot, and everyone and everything is revolving around him. The flower bearing, like I showed you, some flowers now. They are producing flowers to be offered to Krishna. The the mountains are producing diamonds, so you can make diamond jewelry and offer it to Krishna. The fruit-bearing trees are producing fruits, which can be offered to Krishna. So everybody is producing something. Similarly, Kuku is cooing and welcoming Krishna in the forest of Raj. Hmm? Peacocks are dancing and welcoming him. So all living entities are having some talent, which is given to them by Krishna, and they are using the talent to please and serve Krishna. Hmm? So we also can join hands with them. If I uh, uh, accept that type of mood, that I am servant of the Lord, if I serve Him. you know that will satisfy me the most huh? because the part gets nourishment by serving the whole like my hand so imagine somebody gives you tripati laddu you do like this can the hand become satisfied huh? but if the hand is agreeable to give it to the belly then the hand will get strength correct now yeah because the hand is a part of the body the part should serve the whole as simple as that so krishna is the whole i am a part by serving him i will get satisfaction So that is the true ego, and false ego means what? No, I don't need God. Where is God? Show me God. I don't believe in God. I am God. Every every everything revolves around me. Like that, that is actually ahanka. Or some people say money is God. Money is not God. Money is God's wife. Correct, no? Because money is Lakshmi. Lakshmi is Vishnu's wife, isn't it? Money is not God. He made money into God. Like Ravana made money God. So he wanted to get like Sita alone. And he got destroyed by that. You will see. So it's ahankari. Huh? So ahankara means to think that I am the pivot of the world. Actually, modern day education makes you think that man is the central figure in the whole creation. Correct or not? They make you think like that, isn't it? And then all the vegetables, all the animals are also meant for you to eat, according to them. <laughs> everything in the creation exists for you to enjoy. Correct? Actually, everything is there in the creation for enjoyment, not for our enjoyment, for God's enjoyment. Hmm? And we are supposed to, if you give enjoyment to God, then you will also get. Hmm? You will get your share, undoubtedly, because God is a, such a kind person. If you give Him, He will give you back. Hmm? But if you try to take everything and enjoy yourself, then you have to, you know, then uh, you will be punished as a thief, as said in the Bhagavad Bhagavad Gita three point eleven. Huh? You will find. Uh, he says that. Actually, leave alone this concept which I am telling. Even if you are working in a company, simple thing I'll tell you. See, the relationship that you have with your boss is very important in a company. Your promotion is in his hands. Your hands are his hands. You, even though you may perform very well, unless he gives a recommendation, you are not going to be promoted. 
you can't demand that i have shown this performance you have to give me you know? because there are many many parameters you huh? uh, may say that yes he is a good performer but he may switch out to another company better not give him promotion huh? we can say like that but if he recommends you will get very easily so uh, and another interesting thing when you uh, have a good connection with the boss you know many adjustments can be made possible like you want to go for one week yatra to jagannath puri now in number or something like that so the boss and you have a very intimate friendship Mm. the boss treats you like younger brother mm. you just call him and say sir i have to go for one week yatra if you want me to do some overwork you know for one or two months weekends also i can come like and he may say yeah yeah come for next two three weekends you come let us finish up the project then you take one week leave no problem he will say huh? but in case you have a problem with the boss uh, you have a irritable relationship with the boss even though he can sanction you leave he will not sanction you leave because he want to make you suffer and he delights in your suffering <laughs> correct na so therefore even in your company situation it is better for you to have a good relation with the boss in the same manner if a boy boy's father is sending him money when he is in college any son should be polite and respectful to his father correct na he is a boss before you go to the company <laughs> till you are in the college who is your boss your father is a boss after good company your company boss similarly for all the jeevas krishna is the boss the ultimate boss on boss the ultimate boss so he was telling it was lokanath maharaj said sare duniya ke aadhunik phade likhe log murkhata se sochte hain ki sab kuch ami ba se nikla hai ami ba se nahi bito ba se you know so vitova is a supreme father of all and if somebody shows ahankar and rejects him he is the greatest fool huh? because see the greater the boss greater his influence correct no proper hmm. says if you go to america for example you don't know anything about america but you only have only one thing you are a thick closely connected friend of president of america huh? you know you're related to american president do you need anything in america you don't have to worry you just go to airport the airport people will receive you warmly and the vip treatment they'll give you they will move all the crowd aside and they'll bring you correct no and they will take you in a special vehicle to the president's office and you can dine with the president and then you can tell ask the president please tell me how are the communication systems you are running in the country you know how what are the transportation systems uh, you know how are the political systems sitting in his room within 2 3 days you can know the whole america if you want and that's what arjuna did with krishna krishna please tell me the truth krishna said bhumi na ponala va you come no buddhi revacha ahankari tiye me bhinna me prakshita in one verse he finished the material energy aprayam itastu anyam prakriti vidhi me param another verse he finished spiritual energy so all the truths were revealed to arjuna in one one question only Uh, krishna revealed it but if you don't have relationship with krishna like the gyanis who have the ahankara to think that we are god then then the gyanis are like what gyanis are like a worm for example imagine if a worm is sitting in the branch of the tree it has to find out the root of the tree but it has to figure out the root himself is it easy so he goes in a tree like this he moves slowly 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 and then he comes to the end of the branch and says this is the root he thinks but this is not the root there are multiple branches huh? going this way that way it's a twisted tree complicated tree but if somebody catches that worm and puts in the root of the tree then he can know the root huh? but on his own he is not able to figure out so therefore bahu naam janma naam ante he takes many many lifetimes it takes so for a bhakta life is very easy bhakta gives up the hankara huh? gives up the false ego and accepts that krishna is the ultimate doer huh? he is in control i have given an interview if krishna wills he will give me the job i have given my exams if krishna wills i'll get good marks no like radha gopina temple there was one boy uh, who used to assist gaurang prabhu in jj jj right? medical he used to work so hard bringing boys for the program and everything he would heartily study the books gaurang prabhu repeatedly scolded him hey every time you are enthusiastic for krishna consciousness but you are not studying because of gorang post too much push here and there little bit he studied but uh, the day before exam he had come to chapar temple 
Gaurav Prabhu said, hey, tomorrow's exam, you come here. Prabhu Ji, I have a mercy case, ho gaya, Prabhu Ji. He said, if I have a mercy of God, then I will pass it. So I thought instead of studying the book, now I can pray to <laughs> Radha Gopinath. He came. So he prayed. And the amazing thing, next day, when the question paper came, whatever portion he had studied, exactly that came. He wrote very well and then he passed. So he went around and telling everybody, he said, I studied only this much and I got good marks. Because Radha Gopinath Marsi, he was telling Gaurav Prasad, don't spoil other fellows also. <laughs> he said. So sometimes you see that you do your part and then, like you know, you sow the seed, God gives the reins. Now you give the interview, God, I mean, the panel has to choose you for the job. And you write the exam, the invigilators have to give marks. So you only have 50% in your, in your hand. Everything is not in your hand. Huh? I will tell you one, one classical case of a person. One boy, you know, he finished his engineering. He was a mediocre engineering score, something like 62-64%. But his goal was UPSC. Engineering also, why he didn't get good marks? Because he will be reading other books, yeah. other than engineering books. Somehow he got succeeded with super engineering. So UPSC, he tried. Almost four to five years he tried. He went to Delhi, he studied this, studied that. He was very fond of becoming a, one of the bureaucrats of India. He had that aspiration. First he tried national level, that didn't work. Then he came to state level. Mm-hmm. That also, because you, you may be aware, in UPSC, you know, 10 lakh people appear. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, only 10,000 people are chosen in prelims. And then the second round, uh, out of the 10,000, only two, 300 people are chosen. Hmm. And then, in case you want to again reappear, you let again go all the way back. Hmm. So he tried and so nothing uh, clicked. He basically didn't work out. Then he, for five, five years went off. Then parents were very annoyed. Where you wasted your time and everything. Then he said, okay, then I'll go into management line. Then he tried CAT for a couple of years. Uh, if I trying CAT two times, he couldn't get. Now almost seven years passed. So 21, to, 21 plus 7, how much? He's 28. Now he has to begin his career. So he was very frustrated. And then that is the time he came to ISKCON. Uh, and then he came to ISKCON and met the devotees. He was so frustrated, he thought I'll commit suicide. Huh? But then after meeting devotees, he got hope. Huh? He understood that material life is not everything. Material life, in this world, whether you are a cat or a rat, at the time of death, it matters nothing. Huh? You know, you have to leave the situation and go to the next body. Hmm? He understood that, uh, anyway, in my life, I had to go through this tough, uh, rat, uh, tough situations. Now, you know, subsequently, he did some, you know, some course and then got into a job. Huh? He got into some simple job and eventually he grew up. Huh? So, why am I telling you this example for you? Everybody's life is not smooth sailing. Huh? There will there'll be ups and downs in your academic life. There will be ups and downs in your career life. Even in your devotional life also. Huh? Even after you become a devotee, you know, sometimes you are a serious devotee. Suddenly you got allured by something and you went little diversion and you got a little bit into maya. And then again some devotees pulled you, you came back. <laughs> then again you are going steadily. Something else came up. There are always uncertainties in this world. So, one, what one should do? The safest platform is give up one's ahankara and cultivate these four qualities. Humility, tolerance, respect for all and no expectation of respect from anyone. These four qualities are very conducive for giving up ahankara, giving up false ego. That means, you know, a devotee always thinks that there are many intelligent boys, I can always learn from them. He is always in a learning mode, just like Steve Jobs wrote, no, stay hungry, stay foolish, he said, isn't it? He wrote a book. Stay hungry means, you know, he never thinks I have enough stuff. I always have to uh, be in a mood of learning. Huh? Actually, most intelligent people are the ones who have that feeling. They feel that I don't know enough, I can always learn more. If you are in a learning mode from others, you know, are you boastful of yourself to others or are you in a learning mode when you meet others? Ask yourself. If I am boastful, do you know I did this, I did that, that means we are in ahankara mode. Huh? If you are in a learning mode, even though you already achieved a lot in life, still you have people from whom you can learn. Huh? Like that, like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
that old version lady is climbing on his shoulders and taking darshan of Jagannath. Mahaprabhu says, look at her, how much eagerness she has for darshan of Jagannath. I wish I can have eagerness like that. Even from a simple old village woman, Mahaprabhu is learning Krishna Prem. <laughs> Although he is an ocean of Krishna Prem, you can see that. He is always in learning mode. Huh? And stay foolish means what? Never do, go and tell anybody that you are the most intelligent. They will think you are a fool. Huh? Like you stay foolish means what? Uh, one should ask questions. Never fear. By asking many, many questions, then you grow in life. Huh? By that only. So in this way, ahankara should be given. Ahankara also comes because of thinking that without me, this cannot go on. Huh? I am the first one to start this. Nobody else can do this. Huh? This kind of feeling. There was one king who told the minister that it is me who is running the kingdom. All praja depends on me. Like that he was very boastful and proud. So the minister said, My dear king, I am sorry. No, I will tell you an example. He said, There was a bullock cart was going. Two bulls were driving the bullock cart. Huh? Uh, and you have seen that in bullock cart, they have one uh, wood hanging. You have seen that? Uh, between the two bulls, they have wood hanging. It was hanging like that. For the weight, I think they put that. So, one dog happened to be on the road and the dog went between the two bulls. He was, he was also walking. And the dog assumed that I am the one pulling the bullock cart. He was assuming. But actually, who was pulling? Bulls are pulling. And the dog was thinking, these two bulls are taking my help because... I am pulling the bullock and they both are my assistants, he was thinking. Huh? And the dog was walking. So the man who was driving the bullock cart was wondering, Are, what is this? This dog is coming in between them. He should not get any accident or something like that. So he just moved that uh, hanging stick, like that he moved. And that hit the dog from behind. <laughs> but he uh, was shouting and then he ran away. Huh? Yeah. But the dog who ran out of that place, went to the side of the road. But the dog was surprised that even in my absence, the bullock cart is moving. Huh? It is not that only I am moving. Correct now. So, minister told him like this. So, the king got offended hearing this story. What do you mean? I am like the dog you mean to say? <laughs> Without me, nothing can move. Minister, I am not saying that, my dear king. But you see, ultimately, Krishna is in control. You see. You know. So, minister gave a suggestion to him. See, in the outskirts of our village, there is one mandapam. Huh? There is one matha. Dharmashala is there. You... Change your waist boot. Huh? You look like a beard and moustache and hair. Nobody should know you are king. Huh? Wear a monk's dress and stay there for a week and see how your kingdom is going, he said. And the king was very hesitant. He said, no, 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 even one day your kingdom cannot run without me. And one week you are telling me. He said, no, 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 I am telling you. I am your minister. I am here. I will take care. Don't worry. You just stay for a week and you keep watching from there. I will also give you news regularly what happens. So the king reluctantly agreed to go and stay like a monk there. Huh? One day passed, and the king would be repeatedly calling the minister. Tell me what's happening now, morning, what happened, after what happened? Because he was thinking, who is running the kingdom? I am running. So after three days or four days, the king was feeling very restless. Should I come back? Should I come back? The minister said, no, not yet, not yet. You stay there. Huh? And the neighborhood, all the people started talking, king is missing, king is missing. And the king told the minister, everybody is saying I am missing, should I come now? He said, no, 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 let people say, just wait and watch. And the neighborhood kingdom king came to know, king is missing. So he attacked. Now the king shouted at the minister, hey, neighborhood king is attacking, now I have to come. I can't listen to your word anymore. He said, the minister said, my dear sir, your son is ready to go for the war. Your son is about 14 years now. He has taken military training from the age of six 6 to 14, he is trained now. By the age he becomes 16, he will be out of the Gurukul after that. He will be a proper Rajukumar and he can become the next king. Most of the training is over for him. So he is ready to give a try now. Give one chance to your son. He said, no, 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 he's a small boy. What can I do? He will easily be defeated in the battle. I am afraid. He said, no, no, don't worry. Let him get one opportunity. So the minister had a tough time you know, keeping the pressure, the pressure playing king down. And amazingly, this boy not only defeated the king, he conquered his whole kingdom. He sent all his ministers, the neighborhood kingdom was taken away. And the king who came to attack, he was put behind the bars. And all the people showered flowers, put garland, and the neighborhood kingdom also came under this kingdom. 
and there was a big festival. Everybody said, make this boy the king. Huh? Anywhere the king is missing, let this boy become the king. Huh? And that king anymore couldn't stop. He came running immediately. He threw away the monk's dress and put on the king's dress. I am here, I am here, don't worry. <laughs> I am available for all of you. And all the people told him, sir, it's all right. You may be a king, but you see, your son is also very child dress, very powerful. Now you can relax, let your son be the king. So he got uh, very put off. Huh? Then the minister told him, see, my dear king, you have not chanted Hare Krishna, that's a problem. Huh? <laughs> if you chant Hare Krishna, you will see that everybody gets old in this world, correct? No? One day you will get old. You know, gadi, body is like a gadi, it will not work. Gada, 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 gadi, it will be. Huh? It will not work. Don't try to keep the control in your hands even after you become 60, 70, 80. Huh? Hand over the control to your son. And then you push up, you chant Hare Krishna, go back to Godhead. Huh? Interested. So the king was thinking he is indispensable. Correct. Now, this is one aspect of Ahankara. Hmm. Ahankara means I am a very important person. Hmm. Like in IIT, I was telling you, in my in my time when I was studying in IIT, uh, in, in the beginning of 90s, there was one boy who was a topper in first year, second year, third year. Steady topper. His mother was behind him. She said, you have to be a gold medalist hmm. in B.Tech, undergrad. Hmm. So, in the fourth year, he failed in three papers. Somehow, some blunder happened, a mistake happened. Then our mother is calling, friends are calling, he's inside the room. He bolted the door and weeping inside. Huh? And friends are batting the door. Hey, open, open, open the door like that they're calling. He's not opening the door. Huh? Because he knows, if I open the door, what will they ask about? Oh. Oh, yeah. So you, not only you could get gold medal, you also failed in three papers. Everybody was... But he was not, my mother was calling. He was repeatedly cutting the phone. Huh? And he was getting tension. As every time the call will come from mother, his whole hand will tremble. Huh? But in the middle of the night, he entered the Virar Lake. Huh? In IIT, there's a Virar Lake in IIT Bombay. Huh? Submerged himself. Because he had created a self-image of himself. You understand now? Huh? What is a self-image? I am a great intellectual and I am going to be a gold medalist. Huh? And I am going to show the world who I am. Huh? And when he could not do that, he thought, I am a total failure. Then he committed suicide. So, because he had that ahankara. That ahankara is what is causing suicides. Ahankara causes two things. A bloated ego or inferiority complex. Two extremes. Both are not suitable for us. No? We actually have to know that you can have the joy that I am Krishna's part and parcel. I am Krishna's servant. And in this world, everybody comes in this world with empty hands. And everybody goes with empty hands. There is a song which says, <clears throat> when, when a child is born in this world, they put a cloth around his body, which has no pocket. Like here I have a pocket, you see. But the child's cloth has no pocket. Why? Because he doesn't keep any money with him. Any expenditure he needs, who spends? Parents spend. Similarly, when a person dies, they put a coffin cloth over his body. That also has no pocket. Why no pocket? You can't carry anything with him. That means you bring nothing with you and you carry nothing with you. A balance sheet if you make, you bring zero and take zero. That's all. Then why worry? Na kuch saath laaye te Na kuch leke chalenge Jo is dunia mein paaya Idhar hi chod kar chalenge That one should remember. Huh? You, you didn't bring anything. You didn't carry anything. Why lament in this world? So this world, life in this world should be Taken like a game, like a play. <laughs> like you play football, you play cricket. Take life like a game. Take it light. No? Don't take it too tense. No. Academic. Uh, all these people in the coaching class, boys, girls, <laughs> like that, that. They're very feverish. You've seen that? Is it good to take like that? Because of Ahankara, it's very dangerous it is. Huh? You are not the ultimate controller. Krishna is the ultimate controller. Huh? Academics is one aspect of life. Huh? Then you have uh, your relationship with parents. Then you have your sports. Then you have your entertainment. Then you have time with God, prayer to God. Huh? So many other aspects of life are also there. So, Ankara should be given up. And the last one, third one, he says, Bahulayasam. Means what? Great labor. Atyahara. Prayas, as he says. So there is a prayas, karma prayas, jnana prayas, yoga prayas, we call it. Karma prayas means what? People work physically very hard. There was one man who, who 
who was actually working 12 hours a day in an IT company. And the company was, in those days was giving him 45,000. They said, if you just add two more hours, we'll give you 50,000. Mm -hmm. A round figure. Huh? So he went back and asked his wife, they're telling me to add two more hours, make it 14 hours. What do you think? She said, hey, that's wonderful. Full round figure, we get 50,000 again. Go ahead. Huh? She said, two hours is not a big deal, she said. The moment he started working for 14 hours, his body started giving trouble. He started getting stiff neck, ulcers in the mouth, back pain, you know, indigestion and all that. And the result was he started going to doctor. Every month he had to spend 5,000 rupees. 5,000, 5,000 he was spending. So the net ultimately, did he earn anything? He earned only pain. Neck pain, stomach, uh, you know, indigestion and back pain, all this. This is the only thing he earned. And the 5,000, what he earned, he took it and gave it to doctor. You take from the office and give it to doctor. And the 45,000 remained as it is. So, that is an example of ayas. Ayas means what? You, bahula ayas means you are doing labor more than what you should be doing. According to Prabhupada, in the seventh canto, you will see, you know, Prabhupada gives a very clear indication of, you know, how one should work in an office. He gives a very nice. Three. This one, yeah. Do you want to read this? Read this. The human form of life is meant for liberation. But unfortunately, due to influence of Kali Yuga, every day the Grihasthas are working hard like asses. Early in the morning they rise and travel even 100 miles away to earn bread. Especially in the Western countries, I have seen that people awaken at 5 o'clock to go to offices and to factories to earn their livelihood. People in Calcutta and Bombay also do this every day. They work very hard in office or factory and again they spend 3-4 hours in transportation returning home. Then they retire at 10 o'clock and again rise early in the morning to go to their offices and factories. This kind of hard labor is described in in the Shastras, as the life of pigs and stool eaters. I am Deva Deva Bhata, I am Loke Krishna Gaman, Arya Deva Deva Jamke, of all living entities. Of all living entities who have accepted material bodies in this world, one who has been awarded this human form should not work hard day and night simply for sense gratification, which is available even for dogs and hogs that eat stool. One must find some time for hearing Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. This is Vedic culture. One should work eight hours at the, at the most to earn his livelihood. See, how many hours purpose is? One should work? Eight hours. Clearly, it's there in the purport. Eight hours at the most to earn his livelihood. And See, if you are working eight hours in the office and your bus takes you one hour up, one hour down, it becomes ten hours. Not a problem because in the one hour in the bus you can relax or you can do reading, proper book reading or hearing something you can do. Nowadays, they have good, decent buses they have. So, you don't have to drive a bike. You can sit in a company bus and go. And eight hour job is good. Some boys have this type of jobs I've seen, even today also. Yeah. Mm. And either in the afternoon or in the evening, a householder should associate with devotees to hear about the incarnations of Krishna and his activities and thus be gradually liberated from the clutches of Maya. However, instead of finding time to hear about Krishna, the householders, after working hard in offices and factories, find time to go to a restaurant or a club where instead of hearing about Krishna and his activities, they are very much pleased to hear about the political activities of demons and non-devotees. And to enjoy sex, wine, women and meat, in this way waste their time. This is not grihastha life, but demoniac life. The Krishna Consciousness Movement, however, 
he with its centers all over the world gives such fallen and condemned person an opportunity to hear about krishna yeah in the dream in a dream we form a society of friendship and love and when we awaken we see that it has ceased to exist similarly one grows once grows society family and love are also a dream and this dream will be over as soon as one dies therefore whether one is dreaming in a subtle way or a gross way these dreams are all false and temporary one's real business is to understand that one is soul aham brahmasmi and that is activity his activity should therefore be different yeah. then one can be happy yeah then he got in brahma bhuta prasanna so one uh, who is engaged in devotion service can very easily be liberated the dream of materialistic life huh? so in this way prabhat says that bahulaya uh, sam is explaining huh? how people are slogging why a man is slogging because he thinks if i slog more i can earn more correct no that is a notion many people have actually you will see prabhat got the example of modi you know he had uh, thousands of people working under him although he was only anguta job hmm. he was only putting he didn't even know how to put his signature there are people who have thousands of people working under them they are multi millionaires they don't know how to put the signature also sometimes if they have to withdraw something they will tell their friend to put signature you seen that they say huh? but they make a lot of money because it's there in their fate huh? so don't unnecessarily slog hard actually why we don't slog hard there is a reason for that because if you work hard and earn a lot of money also you will store it in the bank and that money you will not enjoy after your death somebody is going to enjoy that then if somebody has to enjoy why should you work hard generally in this world in this world all of us work for our happiness correct or not if you say you are selfish then why are you storing and keeping for somebody else huh? you are supposed to so in that way also in common sense point of view also if you see huh? you are stocking and stocking and stocking not spending not stocking and stocking and stocking and one day you die just like the honey bee is stocking honey one day the farmer comes with a fire torch and drives away the honey bees and takes the whole honey comb and goes away huh? like that a death will come one day phew, get lost from the scene and then you earn 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 save and keep it and you are kicked out and then that money the money will be given to somebody else huh? isn't it or even during the lifetime some thief may steal also huh? there are people who locked their house and went out for a tour or something some thief broke into the house correct they have lost gold coins money and everything so either money leaves us or we leave money that's for sure is there a third possibility this is the only possibility either money leaves us or we leave the money so therefore one should know that hard work for accumulation in this world is foolishness because then the ultimate goal of life is forgotten Like going back home, back to Godhead, correct? No. Otherwise, uh, like, like right now, you see, however way you spend your time now, you are preparing for that towards the end of your life. Like every day, you are chanting Hare Krishna, you are reading, you are taking darshan of the deities, you are associating with devotees, distributing books, distributing holy name. You are absorbed in this consciousness. At the time of death, this is what is going to take you the next body. Hmm? you the devotee body otherwise nowadays even devotee boys who have taken some training in centers like this when they become very materialistic they gradually spiritual life goes to a background spiritual life goes behind and uh, they want to prove to the public see my image huh? see i am like our son has gone to america you know he is making so much money okay this glitter and glamour will go on for how long huh? how long can you show off this material body will wither away huh, one day the reality is the soul huh, and the soul's relationship with krishna therefore don't do over endeavor endeavor is agreed ambition is solid but over ambition is no good hmm? therefore the shastras criticize over endeavor hmm? you should not be in comfort zone you should not be in panic zone hmm? in the stretch zone you have some effort you have to do Give, give up laziness. Krishna very strongly tells in Gita giving up laziness also. You can't be lazy also. Right? Krishna doesn't say you just eat and sleep as a devotee. He doesn't say that. Arjuna also, if you see, Krishna told Arjuna that not that you sleep in the chariot and I will fight for you. No, I will give you advice, but who will fight? You are. You can do a job, make money, um, and give your family members everything. but this is not the only goal of your life 
this is a this is actually a material duty in your life but the spiritual duty vertical duty should not be forgotten this is a horizontal duty horizontal duty will keep you in the material world the vertical duty will take you back to godhead so that's what he is saying here at action performed with great effort by one seeking to gratify his desires and enacted from a sense of false ego is called action in the mode of passion i spoke on this because modern day society is very much characterized by mode of passion so here are a couple of questions um uh, one of which i answered i think in this give the mic to him some students have asked uh, yeah and this question related to this you can finish up you can read this no mic mic keep it close mic on this was the third question often time i am anxious about my future and thought like uh, what will happen for me in future will i get the job in tough time like recession where there is a cutthroat competition what type of job will i get in the future will i be able to continue my krishna consciousness in the future if i don't show a good example my kc will become an end, krishna consciousness krishna consciousness will become an end etc this thought often disturb my practice of krishna consciousness how to overcome this and properly practice my krishna consciousness see one thing you can know you certainly want a very high paying job in a very reputed company which is nice if you get let us assume that worst come worst i mean you don't you didn't get such a job eh? in a very high paying job in a great company you got in a company which nobody knows much there are also people in such companies also correct no uh, okay you got some job huh? and some salary you got say you were expecting a very high salary but you got half of that say huh? there is a possibility or there is a possibility uh, that you got a very mediocre job huh? which just gives you hand to mouth only that much money only hmm? you are just earning and spending there are many people working in bombay like that and they get you know, with that money they can get accommodation to stay in a chal type of place and some food to eat and then all day they slog hard correct no there are people like that sometimes you may get a job like that or you may not get job at all for 3 months 6 months one year some people don't get so therefore lord krishna teaches you hope for the best and be prepared for the worst worst come worst what what is going to happen say let us assume you didn't get a job at all for one year also so in case such a thing happen, you should be ready for all possibilities huh? for the best possibility to the worst possibility and you have to think about it write down in a paper write everything there are 10 possibilities and then be prepared mentally then you will not get this tension generally our mind is stuck only here huh? the best possibility huh? i want this i want this i want this i want this you think like this and then when you get something here here then you, you your mind blows off correct no therefore krishna says keep all the possibilities uh, like for example i am uh, driving a bike i fell off the bike and i got a wound or i am driving a bike i fell off the bike and i got my leg fractured two months my leg is to be repaired or while driving a bike somebody fell off the bike and then uh, hit by a truck or something like that or a stone hit his head and died on the spot mm-hmm. so in this three examples i gave you what is the best thing that can happen to you when you are driving a bike to get a wound what is the worst thing that can happen death correct no but even after death the soul doesn't that is assurance given in gita so there is nothing to lament if you know the hope for the best and be prepared for the worst also okay then uh, i will leave the body and get another body huh? this body is no more fit to live then i'll get another body so therefore in gita krishna says there's no reason to lament <clears throat> see one thing you will know like i'll tell you one example there is one fit tuber youtube channel you might have seen probably he is a pune boy only he studied in pune one of the colleges he was a simple boy eh? and he was friend of one of our devotees recently came to a temple uh, nvcc pune temple this fellow came and he stayed for four five days i mean he was he come so just to see darshan and everything mm-hmm. so one somebody asked him now he is a very popular uh, you know youtuber probably has 6 million or 8 million people you know uh, who watch because why why people like his thing because he speaks with clarity and uh, now many things connected to health also <clears throat> 
you know Mm-hmm. and even all products in the market he will show you and show you what is fraud what you should not buy what you can buy so many people like his videos huh? and he is very frank in speech and everything he shows also how to do yoga exercises and all that so in one interview they asked him you have become such a popular youtuber now big man now and you are touching lives of millions of people now you know with ayurveda he is ayurvedic doctor i think now with ayurveda and uh, hygienic life and all these things eco friendly life and so in case you were not entertained in youtube so much and people didn't recognize you what would you be doing so in that video if you see that video he has put he, he shows a picture of himself standing in a hot gadi with fruits <laughs> you know fruits and salads and fruit juices and with a turban on his head <laughs> this is what i'll be doing <laughs> because this is my mission he says <laughs> my mission is to see that people eat vegetarian eat simple and don't ruin their health ruin their body either i will achieve it like with a hard gadi a small number of people i will influence and if i can be a youtuber i can influence millions of people but ultimately my mission is same in the same manner if this boy who is asking this question if you are a krishna devotee if i have a high paying job you can earn lot of money and give to krishna if you didn't get any job also or you you got some very meager job still ultimately in both cases you can be a krishna devotee or not will krishna say that because you didn't get a good job you can't be a devotee will krishna say that either case you are krishna krishna will accept you in fair weather and foul weather in uh, like we say in rain and shine huh? in both cases he will accept so uh, this boy i would tell him that he has to get very strongly rooted in krishna shelter then you will have nothing to worry huh? in this world be prepared for the worst and hope for the best and anything in between but these are all temporary material situations but my shelter in krishna is everlasting shelter huh? so my vision is uh, be a devotee and make others devotees huh? is that the mission of your life if that is the mission of your life you have nothing to lament in this world hmm? like somebody become brahmachari one brahmachari said prabhu ji if i join your temple as brahmachari can i shine like gauranga prabhu or amogilla prabhu or amarendra prabhu and if i cannot shine then what is the use of joining he was asking i said hey you are talking like making a career hmm? even as a sadhu baba hmm? i said are you are a fakir ha huh? if you are joining the temple as a sadhu you are a beggar and you are shocked who is a beggar what do you say yeah you are a beggar because you don't earn any salary as a brahmachari you live on charity the only expectation you should have when you join is kan temple is i want some seva to do please tell me to clean the latrine or toilet please tell me to mop the floor tell me you tell me to worship the deities tell me to you know study and preach bhagavad gita you should approach the brahmacharya ashrama in a mood of seva i want some service not come in a mood of a building a career because then it's the same the fruity mentality correct na he is nona prabhu ji that's all right that is uh, the theory is that prabhu ji bhagavatam says that i also understand it but at the same time you know my mind also wants to know can i be a famous brahmachari i said this is all cheating of your mind i said the yeah, brahmachari doesn't care about whether he is famous or infamous i mean not so famous or whether he is recognized or not recognized he only thinks if guru and krishna are pleased i have achieved the perfection of my life that's all nothing else huh? so therefore like one boy giant as a brahmachari he was in yellow brigade and uh, when he finished yellow brigade he said prabhu you know many of the other people told me that i am a very smart talker huh? i speak i am very energetic person and i a motivating talk i give so now i want to go and get training in motivational speech and i want to become a very big speaker so he left the ashram went out and almost 4 years later i met now his hair style has changed now huh? different type of hair style and then he showed me one or two videos and he came i was shocked he was doing lot of actions and tamasha and speech stylish speech and all that still he doesn't have many big followers now he has some small number of followers but he says i am on the way to become a big famous speaker but what i am saying is i said you want to be a devotee or you want to be somebody just a popular fellow in the world huh? so these are all craziness you understand no 
we we are not here for anything other than becoming a pure devotee of krishna hmm? iskon is for making pure devotees even that ground level reality dawns in your heart you have no anxiety no lamentation at all yeah? be well grounded on that reality what is the another question <coughs> you the mind take the mind <coughs> I am doing so many things better Sound than other devotees. I am doing so many things better than other devotee here, except, ah, uh, except I am doing many other thing better than other devotee except, although except although completing chanting, although except chanting, although completing sixteen noon. Still, I see that they are far more ahead than me in their humility, obedience to superior. I don't see any progress with myself. I have to prioritize chanting. Then I have to leave few things. What should be doing so that I can become more humble, more obedient to superior? See what this fellow devotee is feeling. <clears throat> if I chant some more rounds, quality rounds, then if I study the shastras more deeply, then I will cultivate qualities like humility, simplicity. friendly behavior with devotees and in this way i can become a properly situated vaishnava but i am not doing that instead what i am doing i am working too hard prayas huh? in spiritual life like in prayas in spiritual life also you have seen now sometimes you know running here and there distributing books following up the boys sleeping late night you know getting up in the morning and sleeping in the chanting time uh, poor quality chanting poor quality reading and most of the time Going, going to get groceries in the market, cooking, prasad, feeding the boys, follow up, keeping database, organizing camps, and then sometimes you get feel burnt out. Huh? Sometimes even in the uh, services, some boys have got fed up uh, because of too many services like that, hmm? and uh, they become angry also with many people because of not reading and chanting going on well. Uh, such uh, devotees who are very hard working. and they also become irritable with other people and they don't show proper vaishna behavior so other vaishna was also unhappy his leader leader is also unhappy with his behavior so then he feels i am doing a humpty amount of service but nobody is happy with me mm-hmm. plus my chanting and reading is also poor so it's appears like a failure in my life correct no on the other hand the other fellows are very conscious of their japa sadhana they sleep on time they get up on time they take care of chanting They take care of their reading. Sadhana card eighty eighty. Everything is good, but they don't do any service. So which one is better? You all understood it. How many have understood clearly the question? Okay. So this fellow is very what do you call it strict in his sadhana card eighty eighty, but they don't do much service. Huh? They take care of themselves very well, and uh, leader is also happy that you know. His sadhana card is very good, and then other devotees feel that they are humble and polite and simple because they are exhibiting certain Vaishnava behavior. Others are happy with them, whereas this person is, you know, doing bahula asam in spiritual life, huh? lot of hard work, and he is doing, and it is helpful also because the whole center is taken care. You have seen some boys like that who work too hard. How many of you have seen people like that? Correct, na? Slog like anything, huh? One by eleven o'clock in the night is washing all the pots because next day morning you need pots for cooking. And there are boys like that, washing the pots, getting the grocery, fixing the hall, organizing camp, and you know everything they do. Every small thing to big thing they do like that. But then his chanting and reading goes on and toss, huh? and you know, he is irritable with devotees sometimes. So which one is good? For, the balanced fellow is good, or this is good? Huh? Balanced one is good. Now what happens? Balanced one is considered selfish because he is doing his own chanting and he is reading. And you tell him to do some service? No, probably it's not in the schedule. You will say. Huh? So he will do, and then he will sleep on time, wake up on time, do his chanting, reading, and he doesn't take responsibilities much in the center. He is more or less concerned about. Me and my my sadhana and my going back to God. It is thinking like that, but at the same time, because he is very balanced and everything, he is well behaved. He is very humble, simple, and senior is happy. Others are happy, but the other fellow is extending himself for seva. But seva becomes so big that sadhana and an sadachar they go to background. So which one is good? Huh? Both are good. 
both are not good yeah we need a balance so what would you tell this person who is slogging fellow what would you tell him you should tell him that your seva is becoming a mindless endeavor huh? mindless nowadays there is a lot of talk about on being mindful huh? mindless endeavor means what service is not even he says this so sachidananda maharaj says book this vision doesn't mean you just load the bus with books and go and deliver huge number of books in the village and come back it's not like a universal parcel service united parcel service you put the books and go and deliver and come actually you have to distribute the books with consciousness because you have to they have to you have to touch the people's hearts and when you go to the villages while giving books lovingly you have to give the books speak to them about krishna do some kirtan and your good behavior should touch the people's hearts also and you are giving book is actually you are gifting them you know krishna consciousness you are giving them krishna you should remember that but if you are not reading chanting properly your service will become like karmi work it will become like a material work so what makes the material work spiritual is your divinity in your consciousness so this hard working fellow should be told prabhu wait a minute write down everything you are doing cut down some of your service and then chant properly and read properly and then balance and the other fellows should be told hey you are taking care of yourself thought extend karo huh? sacrifice take some of his service whatever service is told to cut in this person that should be given to those guys correct na catch them and bring them out of the room chalo abhi bahar aao nikalo chatai ko fold karo ha huh? in a grocery like karo some people whatever you tell only they will do you seen that ha jitna jo bola so only that much they will do. so then the manager has to be intelligent you should cut down some portion of this fellow service and give to them and push them little bit and they will do it like that so that way both will get balanced so these people will learn little selflessness and that fellow will learn little taking care of his consciousness so both are important is that clear to everybody that's all no thank you yeah yeah quick the progress the progress of jeeva depend upon the sincerity of him or the ability of teacher because often time we discuss in our discussion of preaching that mistake of immaturely dealing with the juniors not providing facilities have chances of boy leaving the association now if the jiva is sincere why do this condition affect him and on the contrary how if a jiva is insincere he picks up because of mature dealing of because of mature dealing of the seniors going to the shloka ye yathama prapadyante it is never mention about the ability of teacher it is only mention how jiva approaches the lord lord reciprocate accordingly if that is the case why so much planning to be done for preaching see when you are sitting with the teachers like here many of your mentors here how many of your mentors here you take care of boys you can raise your hand you are mentors so when you are talking to mentors you should tell about the deficiencies of the boys or you should tell the deficiencies of mentors like i am talking to all of you you are all going out and preaching and you bring the boys and you take care of them so should i tell your faults what you need to improve or should i tell the faults of the boys see the boys under you are not sincere therefore they went away should i say that or should i say that you as a mentor you didn't do your job well if you did your job well the boys would not have left i should say that or i should say the i think the boys were not sincere therefore they left i should say what i should say ha huh? i should say the deficiency of the boys or deficiency of the mentor deficiency of the mentor because you need to change even if it there is deficiency of the boy that is another time we will talk about it ha huh? because by talking about the boys deficiency you will think you are a great soul with a hell around their head you'll be thinking uh, i am very wonderful and the boy is having problem uh, actually a guru means guru guru should chastise the disciple according to chanakya lalane bahavo dosha taadane bahavo guna tasmat putramsha shishyamsha taadayet natu lalayet he says if uh, guru simply pampers the disciples you know they will get spoiled these days they have to correct the disciples so if your mentor mentor has to be told prabhu you had 10 boys and you now you have only two boys what happened to the eight boys you say prabhu ji ye tama prapadyante krishna says 
As they surrendered, I, I extended myself. So the eight fellows were not sincere. Two are sincere, I am keeping, if he, if he says. Then you have to tell him, Prabhuji, there is some problem with you. Hmm? And if eight boys have left, you have to find out. Now you send another fellow to call those eight people and ask why you left. And those people, eight people say, Prabhuji, this fellow never calls us. Hmm? He is in his own world. He never invited us for special occasions. And we thought there is no program. Hmm? We were not taken care, so we lost. Then you put them under another mentor, and that fellow carries these eight boys powerfully ahead. Yeah? So, when you talk to mentors, we tell the mentors deficiencies. Yeah? And this is what you need to improve. And when you, when you talk to boys, when the boys are coming on the program, of the, uh, then I also give strong classes. I want them to tell them, see, we can't be chasing after you. It, you have to have sincerity. Yeah? We can give you, see, we are providing this hall for you, Facility, we are providing good prasadam, we are, we are providing knowledge. If you are college boys, you guys are not interested, we will leave this place and we will go to another college. Wherever there is welcome for us, we will go there. And we have enough demand in this world, remember. It's not that we are only with you. Wherever there is, even in America I am going now, there are four dozen places people are calling, but I am only going to ten places. I have clearly told you, these parameters, if we don't match, don't call me, I will not come. The temple has to provide us a room for the boys to stay. They should provide prasadam. You know, the youth preachers' leaders should come for a meeting together and they should adapt the model what you are suggesting. If you follow all these things, then we are with you. Otherwise, we will go to any place where people are willing to comply with. Yeah? Because life is short, the time is very precious. We cannot waste. So, we, when the boys come for the class, we tell them that, hey, don't think you know, we can be running behind you, catching you for the classes. You should have interest. And if you clearly don't have interest, you tell us that, no, 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 we are more happy with cinema watching and playing with uh, you know, video games and everything. Then we'll say bye-bye. And we'll go to another college, <laughs> wherever boys are interested. I have told this openly in many of the voice centers. When voice centers became shrunk, small in size, I told the boys, what, what are you here? Do you want or not? Huh? This is one good thing I like in IIT also and uh, many colleges abroad also. Boys, they will come and tell you that, yes, I liked your class today. Now I would like to come weekly. And they don't need any follow-up. <laughs> like I do this, be a perfect yogi, one course I do Sundays. You know, there are, there are about 20 people in that. Zero follow-up. <laughs> you don't need to follow up at all. On their own, they come. <laughs> they'll connect on time. Exactly on time, they'll connect one hour classes, attend and go. Because they know this is the stuff I want. If I'm hungry, I have to drink my plate and then eat prasad and go. Correct, no? Not that uh, you chase, 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 and finally he is crying with the nose, no, I don't want to be chased. So we don't want that. So when boys come, you correct them. When you are with mentors, you correct the mentors. And you have to tell the mentors also, you have to take care of the boys who are coming. They are, when they are coming and they, they are taking prasad, sit with them and talk to them. Find out what they need, what help they need, and which, what questions they have. Unless you extend, uh, the boys are not going to become devotees. You have to extend, uh, you have to go a little extra mile, like an elder brother caring for a younger brother. Then only they'll become devotees. Clear, no? Both ways it is. And uh, in case the mentor feels that I am always being corrected, and nobody gives me love and care, you know, everybody, that means he is himself not very mature enough to be a mentor. Then he needs more, you know, warmth and inspiration from some senior. Then you can also take shelter of another senior. One, one senior is not able to give you that type of connectivity for you. Then he is not able to represent Krishna for you. Then you switch over to some fellows are emotionally needy fellows. And your counselor is like a jnani, big jnani. Eh? Then you don't get that. Then what do you do? Switch over to another counselor who is emotionally supportive. Eh? Or sometimes the counselor is like a jnani. And the counselor has a lot of emotion. He gives, come, come here, I'll give a big embrace and, and I'll be, and he says, I don't want anything. Huh? You just leave me alone. I want to read books, that's all. I am a man of books. Huh? So there's a mismatch in counselor counselor connection. You understand this point? So therefore, we need a proper connection. So what happens with all of us in Krishna consciousness? If you're in a college, second year, third year, fourth year, you have to have only one counselor or whatever. One or two people are there for you. Once you pass out, you're a working boy, you have many counselors available for you. And you can choose from the temple, you know, there are more than a dozen people for you. 
you can choose from that whom over you are comfortable with there is no rule in voice that over is coming to your voice you have to choose only them as counselor nothing like that you have freedom and i have given even more freedom i said in india you can choose anybody in the entire world also you can choose if you want if you are not comfortable with anybody locally you can choose of course <clears throat> the reason we need one local man to report to is because you have to be accountable to somebody locally शिल्पोपात की और वक्तव्य की